Hi everybody, today I'm going to be sharing our results from uh, reconstructing uh, 3D plants from 2D images. So to give you an idea of what we're, work we're working with here, um, we have several images of a plant taken on a turntable rotated at several different angles. So these are 10 degree in increments. Um, and what we'd like to do is we, we have a really nice view of almost all of this plant structure. Uh, can we use these views to construct a 3D model um, of this plant. So um, we start by uh, annotating the location of each of the curves in each of these views. So in a previous video, uh, I show a tool that we use to annotate these. And basically, um, it's just drawing polybezier curves um, along each of these stems, and then changing views and drawing the same, same curve in the next view. So we do this uh, for every fourth view, uh, just because it's pretty time consuming. And this gives us nine different angles of the plant, which results in a, a pretty decent result. Uh, the second thing we do is we also uh, calibrate each camera so we uh, know where the cameras are, what, uh, where they're pointing, and their internal parameters, like their, uh, their focal length. So to do this, we, uh, without moving the camera, we take the plant off and put a calibration target on with this checkerboard and uh, using some MATLAB software we can calibrate these cameras. So knowing where the 2D curves are located and also knowing the camera calibration information, we can perform triangulation to get a pretty decent result. So that looks like this. And we can see this is a pretty good reconstruction. You get a, a rough idea of where each of these points are, but this has some problems, this result. And uh, the first one we can see best when we look at it from the top. See how noisy this is? Because we've triangulated each point independently without looking at any of the adjacent points or any prior information about what this plant looks like, um, we, we don't have any way of uh, resolving uncertainty to, as to where these points are in 3D. So there's noise in the camera calibration, there's noise in the plant itself because it's moving, and there's noise in the human hand annotated 2D curves. And as a result um, of these three sources of noise, we get noisy output, right? Garbage in, garbage out. The second problem um, we can see here. See this curve comes downward and almost touches the parent branch and then juts outward here. See if I can get a better view of it from over here. Yeah. So look at this really strong discontinuity. What's happening here, and it also happens on this stem here and this stem here. So what's happened is uh, during 2D annotation, when we're drawing these curves, some of the views we draw, you know, a little bit longer than others. Um, just because of, um, you know, it's impossible to get these exactly right. So some curves have a couple extra points in the end and some don't. And as a result, at the ends of these curves, um, you know, the interior points can be seen by all nine views, but at the end, uh, some points are only seen by one or two views. And that's what's happened here. Um, this last point right here was only seen by two cameras and the two cameras were very close to each other so we couldn't get a very good localization of this point so its best guess was that it's here but there's a lot of uncertainty in this direction so um, those are the first two problems so we have these weird artifacts like this and this and we have very rough reconstruction the third problem you probably already seen is that uh, these curves don't actually branch from their parent curves, which of course in a plant they would. All right, you see this curve coming down and it goes right through its parent. And this curve comes down, doesn't ever actually reach its parent. So these are problems too. So the first two problems we can resolve just by adding smoothing. So starting from this guy, we can add smoothing to get this new model. We can see this looks uh, much nicer. From the top, we can see it's uh, the roughness is now smoothed out. It looks a lot, um, a lot cleaner. Uh, those strange artifacts that we saw before are now gone. Um, and that's because the uncertainty 
in the triangulation is now resolved by looking at adjacent points. So maybe I don't really know where this point is, but if I look at the point next to it, which has very high confidence, we can say, well, it's not far from that. So um, as a result, you get uh, basically smooths out that noise. But the third problem is still present. Right? If we zoom in, we can see that these curves still don't match at their parent. They don't connect. So um, what we can do, we, we've performed smoothing on this result by, um, by applying a Gaussian process prior, combining it with the, um, the triangulation, which we treat as a likelihood function. And the product of those gives us a Bayesian posterior distribution. And this is the mode of that uh, posterior, which is also Gaussian. So the reason this is, um, this, is, is, this approach is useful, you can use any kind of smoothing you want, but a Gaussian process uh, allows us to modify this model by adding correlation between each of the curves. So right now, each of these curves are independent, but if we add, um, if we add correlation between, for example, the end of this curve and the point it branches from on its parent curve, we can constrain them to lie in the same location. So we can constrain these curves to be connected to each other. So this really amounts to adding um, off-diagonal elements to the Gaussian process's uh, covariance matrix. And the result, so starting from here, um, adding those extra correlations, we get this result. And the result is also smooth, like before. If we look at it from the top, we get nice smooth curves. We don't have those weird artifacts from poorly localized points. But also, we get the third benefit that these points actually branch exactly from their parent. So here's our final result. It looks pretty nice. Thanks for watching.